for you guys to be, why do you want to be a U.S. dentist, right? So yes. how do you answer that? Roar, tell me about yourself. Oh. Hello, we have a fun interview with this lovely international student. Hello, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself? My name is uh, Mojar Arumi, IS class president here at Tufts, graduating in two weeks. I graduated in 2015 from Iraq, I came to the state in 2017, did my board exams, shadowed in a clinic in San Diego, afterward I applied to Tufts and here we go, graduating in two weeks. Okay, I asked some of you if you have any questions about the applied dental school process as an international student. So I would like to ask Murar what his process was like. Um, I learned some fun facts. You do have to be a dentist in your home country for you to apply to dental schools. Yes. So he will now explain all about that. So in order for you to somehow be able to practice dentistry in the States, there are a couple of ways. I mean, one of the ways is what Gloria did. You just go into the process of applying to dental school. For us, it's different. Like, if you are a dentist and you come to the States, it, you do have like a way of having a shortcut. The first thing is what I did, in which you're gonna go into what we call an international student program or an advanced standing program, in which you can actually join the regular students on the third and fourth year. Now, in order for you to do this, you have to have a couple of things ahead of time. And that's the first option. The second option is actually something that you can do if you're a specialist. Uh, and there is a couple of specialties that are actually accredited by the ADA. With this uh, specialty, you can actually work in the state, uh, in certain states, not all of them, with a limited license. The third thing is you can do what we call an advanced faculty IS program. So you can actually work in a school and you can be a faculty in there for I think five to seven years and then you will be automatically accredited the DMD or the DDS. The last option that you have, if you want to do the GBR, like for example, if you want to EGD, AEGD, and it will not grant you the DDS or the DMD, but it will give you a certificate in which you can work in, in certain states. I'm gonna talk about my experience. I started a journey by applying to the MBDE, the board exams. Part one and two before, right now you have the integrated one, so you have to do it. And you have to do the TOEFL exam, which tests your English. The process starts by you actually, first of all, getting your transcript or your diploma from back home. And you need to somehow send it to an agency. That they will take a look at it and they will just send it back to you with a different way. So technically, they'll just make sure that it will be the same transcript at any school here at, in the States. After that, you register for the exam. Go into a website and you apply to what we call my dent pen. Dent pen is like an account that will stay with you. Build a profile and I wanted them to send the results and I wanted them to notify the Massachusetts, like the society, the dental board. And you start the application. The application is done on a website, on the ADA Capit website. Do a profile and then this profile is gonna be shared with a couple of schools. Most of these schools will be on the Capit. Some schools will have their own application. Out of, I think, 61 schools in the States, 34 or 32 schools do have the IS or the Advanced Standing Program. Really, they start the application cycle in March and it stays till January. Now, each school will have their own requirements, their own prerequisites. For example, for the TOEFL score, some schools will need you to have a score of 100. Some schools will actually ask you for a score of 80 to apply. This is a very competitive process. You need to have good scores. What's gonna differentiate you from others is your scores and the extracurriculum thing, the stuff that you can do in the States or back home. 
in the states you can, for example do your research a research is going to help you application to stand up from the others observe or shadow a dentist and this is what i do the main point is that you have to show the school they're applying to that you're very passionate about dentistry you have to let them know you're a great asset for this school they'll send an email they'll tell you you have been selected you'll be you'll have an interview now some of the schools had bench test which is an exam that you go to the school and they ask you to do a filling they ask you to do a prep it's not all of the schools but there are schools that don't require that did you do one i did yeah I did. at tufts we do have like it's not it's not like a real bench test but it's yeah actually it is it is what to do Am I allowed to disclose this today? Yeah, so technically they 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 give you and they something actually dental. <laughs> something dental. You have to so the whole idea no, I don't think so. No, it's not hard. That, you don't have to set teeth for dental? No, not set teeth. No, okay, you have you to do fillings, teeth. you have to oh, okay. actually do preps. Okay. And each school is different from the other. Um, before you get accepted? Before you get accepted. That's a that's a part yeah, of the a process. Lot of, that's yeah. a lot of things we jump through. Okay. Yeah. You get the interview. You go into the interview, you get accepted and that's it. They tell you to move to the state or move to the city that the school is at and you start the journey. And now here he is. Wow. <laughs> and just letting you know, the interview process can be either through Zoom right now because of COVID. Yes. Or sometimes it can just be online interview or they make you come. Due to the fact that we have the COVID nowadays, definitely ask you to do the interview online virtually. They would ask you to come into the school, they will give you a tour in the school, they will do the bench test if there is a bench test, and they will ask you to wait for the reply. And basically, yeah, that's the process. Like, when do you, when's the latest you can find that? What do you got accepted? Each school have a different protocol of like doing it. Some schools will tell you two weeks after, some schools will tell you four months, six months after, it depends. So tell me a little bit about this ECE. ECE is an agency that will help you to have your transcript read or to have your transcript made in the same way that it's made here in the States. First step, cost $195. $195 is how much they will take. And just make sure that when you apply to it, do the course by course. And it translates whatever course you took in your class to a U.S. equivalent, so that's a very exactly. important Exactly, exactly. That's the whole point of it. How did you plan your finances? Like, how was that for you? Um, you said that you came to the U.S. to assist for a whole year. Yeah. It's unnecessary. You know. I had like free time in which I was like, okay, you know what? It might be a good idea to shadow. Mm -hmm. Not to only help you with the application, but to also maintain the skills. When you have a gap, like for example, you came to the state in 2015, let's say, and you worked different jobs at dentistry. They will ask you, why did you do that? Because they want to see a person who's very passionate about dentistry. They want to see a person who is going to do well. They don't want to see someone who has been away from dentistry for a while because as you guys know, once you don't use the handpiece for a bit, it goes away. like all the skills, everything is gonna go away. So, yeah, but is it a must to do a shadowing or to observe it? No, it's not a must, but it's gonna help you. Like, for example, you have a high GPA, and then I have a high GPA. We apply to the school. Only thing that's gonna help me to have or to stand out other than the other person is anything extra than the GPA. For example, a research, a master, you worked in the community, you helped out, you worked voluntarily. Like, volunteers are something that the schools really look at because it shows how you're considered as a team player because you're helping others and that's what they look for. Yep. So what did you do for your application? For my application, a star my, student. my <laughs> My story is different. My story, um, as I told you guys, I graduated from Iraq. I had the opportunity in which I opened or I established an organization back home. It was an NGO, non-governmental organization. And the goal of that organization is to help others. At the beginning, the goal was to acknowledge the society about oral health and all of these things. But due to the fact that we had a lot of 
things that happened back home we had a lot of refugees and the least thing that I was able to do as a dentist is to help these refugees so we had an agenda luckily our organization had a mobile dental clinic in which we used to go to the refugee camps we used to provide them with a dental treatment yes and because at the end of the day like you being a dentist is not only a matter of doing the job it's like you're passionate you're gonna help others you need to show the others that you care about them and that's the least thing that I could do I feel like this helped me a lot and what did you write about in your personal statement because it's not like I want to be a dentist because you already won so what do you write about so the personal statement it's it's actually a tricky thing because you already have your application the personal statement is actually things about you what are your hobbies and a smart thing to do is to correlate these hobbies, these things that you do on a daily basis to dentistry. For example, I love art, I play piano, and I wrote this in my personal statement, and I somehow correlated it to dentistry because I use these, right? <laughs> exactly, so you have to show who you are to the people that are applying. What's the question prompt? Because, for example, as you know, someone that was pre-dental upon dental school. The question is, why do you want to become a dentist? But for you guys, it'd be, why do you want to be a U.S. dentist, right? So yes. how do you answer that? A lot of us had their own sacrifices, stories. I mean, like a lot of people would come in because they felt, they feel like they've reached a plateau in their life that they cannot exceed. So they would come to the States and they would somehow live the American dream. Some other people are just coming from back home because they don't feel safe. Other people are coming because they pay well here in the States, you know, like each one. Well. <laughs> it's, it's different, like you just have to know what you want and that's exactly right. But you don't say at the interview, like, I came here so I can make more money in this country. You have to be honest. I mean, at the end really? of the day, yeah, you have, I mean, oh. But you don't have to listen in a way, hey, I'm into money, I only care about money. But they already know, like they already know. A couple, like a lot of people would come in here because dentistry is very good in, in the States. And this is a fact. A lot of guidelines that we follow is guidelines based on American schools. A lot of these guidelines is based on the ADA. If you're not satisfied with what you're doing, I think like coming to the state is gonna somehow satisfy your, I don't know, like how do you call it, satisfy your dreams maybe? Yeah. Dreams? Dreams. <laughs> That's one of the factors to be honest. No. Yeah, okay, okay. But tell me about the class size and like what you did to do research on the 30 something schools that do accept international applicants. Each school again would have a different way of doing the program. Like some schools they have I think like 80 spots available for the IS students. That's BU. That's it. <laughs> Other <laughs> schools like our school they only provide 30 spots. For me, I applied to a couple of schools. I didn't apply to all the schools. Because I knew where I'm going. I go to school that is in a city that I like. And Tufts is one of them because, I mean, you know, Boston. Boston is one of the cities that you really have to visit. It's, it's a must. Like, you have to. And for me to be able to live here and to enjoy my lifestyle, it's, it's really a privilege. Now, putting in mind that Tufts is one of the best schools in the whole state, because they do actually, they are, they have, at that point when I did my research, their clinical program is one of the best clinical programs in the whole state. So, it depends upon what you want. My advice is that, do not stick to, to one option, like, try to be somehow flexible. Why for others? Because it's, again, it's very competitive. What do you think is like the minimum GPA cutoff? There is no minimum. That's the other thing. It depends upon the school. I know people who had a GPA of like four, like, and they still didn't get accepted. So, are you going to be a good team player? Are you going to be a good fit for the program? These are the things that they will care about. <laughs> Your sister's here. Yes. <laughs> I, don't. I would like to add that Tufts only accepts green card holders. So every school is different, so do your research. You have to be updated, you have to call or email or look 
into the school's website, look into the requirements. Because some schools, for example, only requested MBD part one. Other schools requested MBD part one and two. And then what about loans? Tell me about loans. Loans. You can, I mean, in my case, I had the green card, so it was easy for me to apply for loans, and I applied for the federal ones. And you do have the option of applying to like private loans. How many schools did you apply to? Seven or eight. And this was your favorite? That was actually my favorite and also the first school that I got accepted. Like, ah. Yeah. I um, actually oh, yeah, the second. Yeah, the second I think, yeah. Because if you start applying in March, they call you, for example, at Tufts, they called me in August to do the interview. Other schools called me in December, in which it was already too late because I already moved to Boston and I already started the program. So did I call you? I think you did. I think more than we needed to. <laughs> well, thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Gloria, for having me. Would you be willing to answer some questions for anyone else, for anything else that I did not apparently cover? Are you, are you gonna pay me? I paid you. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. It would be my pleasure, and I mean, if they want to reach me out, uh, it will, I'll be proud. I, I will. I will put it somewhere in this video. So yeah. <laughs> Follow him. So yeah, let me know if you have anything, and if any other, like, if you have any questions, we can cover it maybe next time. Okay. okay? Thank you. Yay! Thank you. Subscribe to this channel. <laughs>